Hello friends, welcome to the Tech Grunt. Till now on the channel, all the system design that I have come up with are the high level system design. Today I'm starting a new series and this is for the low level system design. And the first example that I have come up with is the snake and ladder system design. And uh, why I chose this problem is because this is one of the simple uh, problem, but it is very commonly asked in a lot of tech companies as part of low level system design problem and it was asked uh, to me also and uh, the uh, the code that i'm going to share with you is the actual code or is the actual solution that i came up with during that interview period of 45 minutes so you will see that there is a lot of scope of refactoring that code and uh, also there is a lot of scope of optimizing the solution that i came up with but we'll discuss about that in more detail when we jump into the code so let's start with this particular design following were the requirement that was given to me so first was it should be a multiplayer game where more than one player should be able to play the game there was no limitation as such on the total number of player who can play the game the second thing was the board should be customizable so before we load the actual board we should be able to provide configurations regarding where we can place the snake where we can place the ladder and also the size of the board so it should not be a fixed size of a in general we have a size of 100 where we start from zero and we go till the 100 to finish the board but it should not be like that that size should be customizable so it should be like uh, it can be of size 30 50 100 anything that should be passed as a parameter the next requirement was that uh, the dice that we are using so that dice usually will be one dice with six faces but the number of dice to use that also should be customizable so we can use we should be allowed to use like two dice or three dice like that and that should also be passed as a parameter and when the board loads that time all these things should be present so the board should be loaded with the configured size that was given as part of the configuration it should load with the snake and ladder position which we configured initially and uh, the number of dice so when the board loads so that time it should load with the number of dice that we have configured so that uh, when we play the game the number should come up based on that if we have two dice so the number should come up in the range of 2 to 12 and if we have one dice so the number should come up in a range of 1 to 6 so board should load up with that particular configuration and uh, the last thing was that the number of players who are playing this game should all be starting with the initial position of zero and uh, at that particular point we should start the game and uh, we should start rolling the dice so this was the overall requirement that was given to me so let us jump into the code and i will walk you through the different class that i uh, that i come up with and also how the game began and how it the start game function and all those things was written so let's jump into the code so as you can see i came up with the following class so the first class that i came up with was the player class so player will have a player name and it will have a player id and when a player loads it will load with their name and the id why in this particular program i just used the player name but uh, if you want to extend this program to capture some statistics based on player like how many game he played and how many game he won how many he lost and uh, all that kind of thing and even to rank the player uh, they were based on the number of game he played and won and the percentage of win and all those things so in that case id is required but uh, in this particular example i just used player name and player id you can also capture other detail like email id phone number and all those things as part of this particular class the next class that i came up with was this dice class so this dice class came up with a variable called the number of dice so when you create a dice that's that time itself you should be able to configure and load that uh, number of dice so if it is like number uh, number of dice is two so this will be initialized with number two and also this dice class will have uh, a roll dice method so what, when roll dice method is called it will basically do the job of rolling your dice and uh, it will generate some numbers so the number that will be generated should be uh, should be decided based on the number of dice you are using and uh, 
you will basically randomize that so what i did was i used math.random and uh, i came up with uh, this number of dice so i just multiplied the higher bound and the lower bound with the number of dice that we have and i added one to it so what this math.random will do is it will pick up the range in which i have to generate the number so my lower bound was uh, uh, so suppose if I have one die, so my lower bound will be one into one that is one and higher bound will be one into six. So difference is five and plus one. So six. So the number will be generated in a range of one to six. If I have uh, number of dice as two, so in that case, this lower bound will be two and the upper bound will be equal to 12. So this this formula will generate a number from one to 12 so uh, 2 to 12 sorry so that that is how i came up with uh, the formula for rolling the dice and uh, this was the dice class that i created at that time the next class that i came up with was this jumper class now this jumper class could be divided into two parts so one class for a snake and one class for a ladder but uh, during that time i just came up with a generic class and i I, I named it as a jumper and it had two point which is the start point and the end point and I used this class itself for both snake and ladder now when it was a ladder the start point was less than the end point and when it was a snake the start point was greater than the end point so that is how I I basically designed these two points uh, I have not put any uh, condition here but uh, we can also put a condition here and I can put a boolean flag here uh, like I told that there is a lot of scope for refactoring and customizing this particular class but uh, yes we can add all those checks here that uh, if the flag for snake is enabled then in that case uh, the start point should always be greater than the end point and if it is a ladder then the other way around start point should be less than the end point so all those can be added as part of this particular class those basic checks so that when jumper class loads with snake and ladder those checks can come up and if there is some error in configuration you can throw it there itself before loading the class the next part was the game board so as part of the game board what i did was i added the dice so when the game board will load that time the dice should be ready then i have a queue of player so the queue what we need to do is we need to add our player in a queue so that uh, we can have turns for the player that one player will make its move then it can be basically pulled out of the queue and put it in the end so that next player can play and in that way the game can be rotated between the players uh, then we have list of snake and list of ladder so there will be multiple snake and multiple ladder that will be placed on the board so that is why i have a list of jumper which is called for snake and list of jumper which is for the ladder and uh, then there is a map here and this map is for capturing the position like uh, this string will be the name of the player which is playing and uh, integer is the current position where the uh, current that player is being placed currently and we also have a board size so this also will be basically ingested at runtime so that part i have not done it here i just uh, use the constructor to ingest uh, the board size the current position ladder snake next turn and the dice but all these things can be basically you can sp use spring spell and uh, we can load it from an application yaml or application dot properties also uh, but this is what i did during that time and uh, then as part of the game board i just added one method called start game so as part of this start game the game will start and the game will go on now what i did not do here is that i did not wait for a player's input to roll the dice so as soon as you add all the player and start this game each player will take its own turn and they will basically the game will automatically continue till the end now what we can do here better is that we can put a, a user input here that we can take system dot in and uh, ask the player to just roll the dice so whichever player is there next in turn so we can just publish the name of the player that okay you roll the dice and uh, once that player rolls the dice so we can just get the name of the player uh, and sorry we can first get the name of the player here 
and then ask him to roll the dice so this is for getting the player's position <coughs> so the way this this code was written is that each player this will go on till we have uh, in our queue if the player size is more than one so till that time the game will go on so if i have five player so first player one then we will remove that player from the queue and we still have four player so similarly till we have two players the game will continue and once the out of those two player one has won the game so we will not wait for the last one to reach 100 so that is why that way we will have as long as the size of the queue is greater than one we will continue the game so first what we will do is we will pull one player out of the queue and for that particular player we will get the current position from the map that we have created here so we will get the current position from the map then we will roll the dice so we will get some number here and uh, based on the number that we have got we can calculate the next cell so next cell will be whatever the current position that that player is at plus the dice value now if this value is greater than the board size then we will not move that player because uh, the player will can only win the match if he reaches exact 100 if his count goes to 101 then he has to try again so that is the logic that has been put behind this so if the next cell value is greater than the board size so we'll put the player back into the queue and will not do anything otherwise if the board size is if the next cell that we are getting is equal to the board size in that particular case we'll simply print that that particular player has won the game and since we have already pulled that player out of our queue we are not putting the player back into the queue that way it tells me that one player has won the game and there he will not get another turn like that so that that is the first two cases that that is handled here now the next case is the general case where uh, he started the player started the game and he is in somewhere in between now for that we need to calculate the next position of that particular player so next position will be based on whether he or she has landed on a snake or a ladder or it's just a normal uh, normal move from like one to suppose he was initially at position one and then after rolling the dice the player got two and that player has to be moved to position three so from one to three that player has to be moved now at position three there can be three scenarios one is like the there is no snake or ladder at that particular position the second condition is there can be a snake at that position and third is there can be a ladder at that particular position so for that uh, what what i did was i created this uh, next position array and uh, i had to create this array because i am using lambda here and either i had to use atomic or i can use a list so i just add i just went for uh, an array here so this next position zero will have the next cell and at that position i checked whether there is a snake at that point or not so if there is a snake i will get the end point of the snake and i will make my next position equal to the end point because if there is a snake i have to move that player down to the tail of the snake same thing has to be done in case of ladder so if uh, if this next position that i got is not equal to the next cell it means that the next position was initialized with the value of end point of the snake and that means that player was bitten by a snake so I just printed a line here that that player has been bitten by the snake which is present at the position whatever next cell position was there if that was not the case then I will also check for the ladder whether there is a ladder at that position and same concept applies here and I also used a boolean here which says that b of 0 equals to true it means that at that particular point a ladder was present and why I'm, I will use this boolean it will be clear in the next line so similar to the snake there is a concept of ladder also and next position will be initialized with the end point of ladder so the player can move up the ladder now if the next position is not equal to the next cell and uh, the b0 is equals to true it means that uh, that player was not bitten by the snake and that player got a ladder that is why we enabled it uh, b0 as true so that we can say clearly when i reach here as that uh, this player got uh, a ladder if we don't put this boolean here in that case even if uh, 
the player was bitten by a snake at this particular point also it this condition will come as true that next position is not equal to next cell and it will say that okay the player has got a ladder also so the print or the output stack that will get it will be wrong so that is why this boolean was required here and at that point i printed that that player has got the ladder at that point and uh, finally if after getting the ladder or after getting uh, uh, not uh, bitten by the snake but after making that particular move or after getting the ladder if that position that i am getting if that is equal to the board size then that player has won the match otherwise we have to put that particular we have to update the map here which will tell the what is the current position of the player and we have to put that player back in the queue so that the player can have another turn to finish the game so that is how i wrote this now if you see and i felt that that this particular method is little overburdened so this can really be it can be refactored easily and i explained that to the interviewer also that it can be refactored but uh, this code was a uh, running code so if i just run this particular code so you can see there are two players that are involved in the game and uh, they each started with position 0 so after first chance uh, this player albert it was at position 1 then pintos was also at position 1 then albert it was at position 3 and so on here if you see bitten by snake and uh, the uh, then albert started again from some uh, previous position and uh, we have like uh, pintos uh, albert's got ladder at certain point and like that so let me run this one more time and let's see if it is same so if you see this time pintos won the game and uh, it nowhere they they were bitten by uh, snake or something once uh, pintos got a ladder here let us run it one more time this time again albert won the game and this time pintos was bitten by a snake at some point albert got a ladder at position 5 one more time i will run last time and you see all these are like it's not a constant thing that is happening it's all based on how the dice was how the dice is getting rolled and uh, the result is coming based on that now this play snake and ladder game if i see this so this is where i just uh, did the constructor injection where i said that i have a dice so i am using just one dice here the player there are two player so player 1 is with the id albert uh, id 1 is albert id 2 is pintos and i added all of these player in a queue and then i have a jumper here so this jumper is for a snake which says that if i am at position 10 you move me back to position 2 if i am at position 99 you move me back to position 12 so this will be the list of the snake that i will have on my board and i will have some ladder also so first ladder will be at position 5 so this says that when i am at position 5 you move me to position 25 and the second ladder is at position 40 so if i am at position 40 you move me to position 89 so that is how the ladder is configured here and finally the map of the player so both started at position 0 and that is how the game board was built using all these things and the size of the board was also given here as 100 and finally i started the game so there are few things that can be made better here but uh, i felt i did really decent job in a matter of 45 minute to come up with the design and also code it and uh, come up with a working solution and uh, i made it to the next round i passed this particular round so i guess uh, this one is a decent enough system design and the code uh, for uh, coming up with a snake and ladder game so that is it for this particular video i would definitely like some suggestion on this particular code that i have written uh, do comment that in the comment section and let me know how you designed this and what is the code that you have written put your code in the comment section also and we can have a discussion over where uh, what are the position where we can refactor this code and uh, come up with a better design so that is it for this video see you in the next one take care bye